Hi, Eva Nichols here. Today I want to swatch with you um, the new uh, Renaissance watercolors that I have um, ordered from April's shop. So um, I have eight colors that I'll swatch out today. I have been excited uh, to share this with you. I um, had seen some reviews on um, YouTube from uh, the Frugal Crafter and Steve Mitchell on um, the Mind of Watercolor about uh, a little creative, um, that's April, who has um, imported a brand of professional watercolors from Poland. They're called Renaissance and um, I just got them in the mail this weekend and now I'm going to set them up in a new palette. I'm going to use my favorite watercolor palette, um, the um, Janie Jones travel palette. Uh, you've seen me set that up um, before, I think, in if you've seen some of my videos. And um, let me tell you, the colors I decided on getting was, um, I got, for my uh, red, I got quinacridone red, and I got transparent yellow for my yellow, and I got a bunch of blues because that's me. I got a phalo blue, and I would probably have gotten Antwerp blue, but uh, there was no Antwerp blue um, that I could see in the series. And um, Prussia blue, um, I, I don't know, I've heard that um, it has some uh, fading problems, so it, I didn't want to go with that. Um, and then, of course, I got my um, ultramarine blue, which I use as my... Uh, um, primary blue uh, in most of my palettes. And then I have the Cobalt Blue Pale and um, then I have um, Cobalt Turquoise which is a new color to me. I thought that sounded interesting. Um, I have Burnt Sienna and I have Indigo. So I'm going to set those up in the palettes and then we're going to do um, my palette guide and I'm going to start um, making a binder with color swatches of all the different colors I own. Um, that's inspired by Denise from In Liquid Color. So I made some swatches here and they are two and a half by three and a half uh, inches and they will fit in a, a binder I've set up with um, uh, some uh, uh, dividers or base, baseball card holders like like this and that's all you know like this anyway so that's my goal here for the holidays I'm gonna take a little time uh, to uh, get all the colors I own and um, I sorted them the other day and it's a lot so I'll be busy but anyway today it's all about Renaissance um, so um, let's get started on getting the colors in the palette and I wanted to wait so you can see first of all the colors come in tubes here she also has them in pants but I'm not a big on pants I like the tubes and they are 15 milliliter tubes and they're very very affordable they range from 650 a tube to um, 825 a tube you know some of the pigments are a little bit more expensive and you know I can get into that but anyway um, and, and they're honey based, I should say that too. And um, I'll get them in my palette and then um, we'll just uh, swatch them out and take a look. Okay, I spent a minute just trying to figure out how I want to lay out my colors. I have 12 um, wells in my travel palette here. And um, obviously I, I'll fill them out so that I have 12. Um, but I just started with these nines that I was sure of and, and then I thought I'd uh, try and see how they worked so I could see where I felt I had holes, so to speak, where. And obviously I only have one red, um, so I know I'm going to need a, a couple more in the red tones. And as usual with me, I have a lot of blues, so I think I'm probably good on the blues and then um, uh, possibly I'll get another yellow. I'm not, you know, I, I like to have mainly primary colors on my palette. So anyway, I'll start with my quinacridone red. I'll squeeze that out here. And I did 
just thought, you know, I'm not going to bore you with all the squeeze outs, but there. So you can see it's uh, nice and fluid. And get the back on. And then um, let me do the French Ultramarine Blue. That's often a very uh, kind of stiff color in, in uh, most brands. So let's see how it is here in Renaissance. And I think I decided it goes here. Also very fluid. It's the the honey base I think that makes them so fluid. And let's just try the uh, uh, cobalt blue pale. Um, Renaissance has two cobalt blues in their range. It's co uh, and I chose the cobalt blue pale. It sounded more like the cobalt blue I'm used to using. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, it definitely looks like it. Cobalt blue is another color that's often a little on the uh, stiff side, but not in Renaissance. Nice and fluid. And um, then I'll see, you know, how they dry up once uh, they are all dried out. But um, I think they dry, from what I've heard on the reviews, they dry fine so you can, you know, have them in a travel palette and stuff like that. So. I'll, I'll uh, continue filling up the other colors and then I'll get back to you. Okay, here you can see just freshly squeezed out the colors and um, then we'll do a uh, little uh, testing and um, they're all very soft, very nice. So here you can see I got started with the blue Normally I start with the red on these, but I goofed, so I'm starting with the ultramarine blue. And then I put a little marker in where I need to leave empty spots because that's what I forgot. But it doesn't matter. Um, the next one I'm going to try out is the um, cobalt blue light. It's called cobalt blue. Pale, not light, but pale. Cobalt blue, pale. So I'm going to put a little water so it'll, it'll thin out there. <clears throat> and you know, I live in a very dry climate, so the, my my uh, wells are already drying on the top. So I definitely don't think it's going to be a problem having them in a travel palette. So paint a cobalt blue one here. Full strength over the black line. And then start dragging it down into where I put the water. That's a nice cobalt blue, exactly how I expect a cobalt blue to look, so I'm glad I got the pale. That was the right choice for me. And that'll be a great sky color. All right, I'll get all the strips on this. You know, I think it's super boring for you to watch that. Um, or I might film it so that I can speed it up. I'll film it and then I'll see what I think when I edit. That's the phalo blue.
just wanted to show you that it has some interesting properties this indigo um, it's like it separates a little bit into like a gray black and then a more of a blue color so I think that can give us some very interesting effects so I'm gonna be excited to work with that indigo and see the the possibilities <clears throat> I normally work with the uh, indigo from uh, Winsor Newton which is different from any other indigos that I have seen in other brands, it's much more kind of even almost like a very dark, rich um, Antwerp blue it has that kind of little bit of a green tone to it. So anyway, that'll be interesting. all-time favorite yellow and that's actually probably the main reason I decided I wanted to try out these colors from Renaissance when I saw the review on uh, Lindsay's channel the frugal crafter where she actually had uh, April who's the importer come over and um, talk about these amazing very affordable professional artist grade watercolors that she imports from Poland after she found them on a trip a couple of years ago. I think that's how the story goes. So um, you can uh, you can buy the colors on her Etsy um, in her Etsy shop. Uh, a little creative and um, I'll have a link down below so you can click over and take a look yourself. Yes, indeed, we have another brand that has my favorite yellow. It's a Pigment 150, PY uh, 150, Pigment Yellow 150, which is my absolutely favorite. And I love the transparent variety um, of the PY 150 where there's no white added to it. So it is truly transparent. That's my biggest gripe with yellows is that most all of them has some uh, white in it. And uh, I don't like it. So. It's a winner, I can already tell, because it it, um, it works exactly like my transparent yellow from Winsor Newton. And now I've also found that um, there are other brands. Uh, M. Graham has the um, Nickel Azo Yellow, which is also pigment 150. And I do believe that uh, it's Daniel Smith has has um, a one the yellow that is also without any added whites. Um, I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, again, but uh, yes, I'm happy with that. Super excited.
all right I finished um, putting the colors on the guide on the palette and now I'm just um, going to lift try to lift out put two strips of masking fluid down on the side here and um, then I'll use a flat brush like this one it's not a scrubber brush just a little bit stiffer brush and I'm gonna try and lift out and I try to be as consistent as possible so I give it three scrubs and lift with a Kleenex in between so there's three so that's definitely uh, easy to lift the ultramarine blue let's try the cobalt blue pale that's one and two and one more and again easy to lift and I uh, I always paint my um, palette guides on the same paper I I used to uh, to paint my paintings on which is arches and so this is arches 140 I paint on 140 or sometimes I paint on 300 pound actually a lot of times I paint on 300 pound this is the thalo blue which we expect to be more staining and it is let's give it a third scrub here yeah, I mean I did get some out, but obviously not nearly as much as there, and you'll see it even more when I remove this. So this is the cobalt turquoise, it's a new color for me, and it's very beautiful, I like it. So that would probably be fun to paint with. And I'm expecting it to lift pretty easily because it's a cobalt. So let's see if I am correct. That was number two. Yes, indeed. So, so far the French Ultramarine, no, it's not French, I keep calling it, it's just called Ultramarine. And the Cobalt Pale and the Cobalt Turquoise lifted out uh, very easily. And here is my Indigo Hue, which in other brands that I've been painting with is uh, quite staining. So let's see how we are here. This one actually lifts better than what I expected. So let's give it the third scrub. Yeah, it lifts pretty good. And actually, I will also say that the um, phalo blue here lifted more than what I'm used to. Now we come to my beloved transparent yellow. That's one. And that is a staining color. I know that from experience in other brands. And it's the same pigment, pigment PY150 which is my preferred yellow pigment and especially these, yeah, so that's, you know, a little staining as expected and then um, we are down to our burnt sienna burnt sienna normally lifts pretty easily also so let's see And that is the case here too. So, so far it looks to me as if the Renaissance colors actually lift a little bit easier than say the Winsor Newtons that I have in my regular everyday palette. So, you know, that can be a plus and a minus of course. It's great when you want to lift out, but um, when you want to glaze it can be a problem if it lifts out. So that I won't know until I've painted with them for a little while. So this is the quinacridone red. And that's also known to be a staining color. And it proves to be true here too, I think. This is the third one. Yeah. But again, I mean, I, you can definitely lift out some highlights, but... Uh, let's pull this off. And as you can see, I left the spaces for four more colors. There you have it. And this is what it looks like on the inside. 
now that it's been sitting overnight. See, they, they definitely, um, you know, flatten out a lot, so they're, they're quite fluid, but, uh, and they, they look very shiny. Just, yeah, they're still very wet. So, it's going to sit here in my studio for a few days just to dry out. Um, yeah, they still move a little bit, but that's expected because, you know, they're using honey. Acacia honey, to be exact, um, in these colors. Um, so the last thing I'm going to show you is um, the uh, individual swatches I did for my uh, new swatch binder. And then I'll paint a very uh, quick little um, test painting. I'm, I, um, I'm going to paint these little ornaments, just wetting them and letting the colors mix and mingle inside. I think that could be kind of fun, just to see how they interact. Okay, so I um, swatched out um, all the colors I bought, the eight colors I bought. So the Quinacridone Red from Renaissance, it's um, PV19, and this is my swatch card. Uh, so you can see the full range, and then here I did a glaze on that side. The only thing I didn't do was a lift out. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. Ultramarine Blue from Renaissance is PB29. And again, very nice granulate. Second, um, I like that. And um, the cobalt blue pale from Renaissance is PB28. And there's a full range and the glazing, and also a little granulation. Then we have the thalo blue, PB15 colon one. Um, nice range, beautiful dark glaze. Um, and um, I found when I did my lid here that it doesn't, it stains, but it doesn't stain maybe quite as much as I have seen in the past with other brands. And then there's the Cobalt Turquoise. It's also a lovely color. And then we have our Indigo. And um, it's definitely a lot grayer and not... Um, as cool as the one I'm used to working with um, with Winsor Newton but I think this one is more like uh, some of the other brands like Daniel Smith and stuff. Um, the pigments in this one here is um, PB60, PB19, PB15 colon 3 and PBK11. So there's four pigments in this one. All the other ones are single pigments. Uh, I don't know if I remember to tell you that in a um, Cobalt Turquoise, it's a PG-50. Um, and then we have our, uh, our Transparent Yellow PY-150. Glorious, glorious color. Um, I really love this one. I think this one, actually, I almost like it better than the one I'm used to working with um, from um, Winter Newton that they also call Transparent Yellow. It's also PY-150. Um, and I've tried out the... Nickel Aso Yellow from M. Graham, also a lovely, um, and it's the same pigment, PY150. So this is the real find for me, personally. And then here's the Burnt Sienna from Renaissance. It's PBR7, um, and it's not as orange as I'm used to from Winsor Newton. I think it's a marginally a little bit lighter. Um, I can see I get some granulations, and it's a lovely color, and I'm sure I can... Um, I can uh, enjoy painting with that one. I just have to experiment a little bit with these two um, because in the Winter Newton I get a very very rich dark uh, evergreen color that I like uh, and these two are definitely not gonna go green. They're gonna neutralize each other I'm pretty sure. And then I'm excited to see how it neutralizes with the French Ultramarine Blue and the Cobalt Blue Pale because that's also a go-to color combination for creating uh, darker uh, browns and grays. So that was the actual swatching and then I'll do a quick little painting to see how they mix and mingle.